I want you to look at the leprechaun in the back. What does that scream to you? Doesn't this look like a porno? Hello, everyone. Welcome into the Geekverse. My name is Phil. This is Zach. And this is Tyler right here. This Why is... Uh, oh, I was about to say. This is episode nine. I, we believe it sure, is. Pretty it sure is it's nine. episode nine. Yep. So we're going to start off today with our rest stop rambles. It's so good to see everyone here again, actually feeling better than I did last time. Yeah, thank God. Thank God you're feeling better. I was about to bring my uh, can of Lysol. Can of Lysol? Yeah. You're just going to spray me? I'm not going to lie. When you got out of my car, I sprayed the shit out of my car. Oh, last week? Yeah. Yeah. Mostly because my wife can't get sick. Yeah, that's not going to say why, but she can't get sick. So, But you are right. We are starting off with the rest stop rambles and... There's some. There's a couple things I wanted to bring up this week. First off, I want to ask, as always, how was your guys' week? Go ahead, Tyler. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Anything good. new? Anything going on? You had a like on Sunday. I think you made some food, right, on your Instagram, on your story, or was that Saturday? Uh, I think that was Saturday. Okay. You had a cool <laughs> chef, uh, a sous chef. Oh uh, yeah. Did and Tater Tot help like at all? Of course, emotional support. Emotional support. Yeah. See, you should have like put an apron on the dog. It was pause was, uh, up there. It was late. I don't care. He you work. Tired. You work him. He, he, you work him. He was emotional support. He's my buddy. What about you, Phil? How was your week? It was really good. I had yeah. a good work. You got week. a new haircut. Yeah, That's I awesome. Know. I know. Got it at a uh, nice little local place here called Quicks. They took really good care of me. And they were really awesome. And they made you feel comfortable. Yeah, which that was, was the big thing. Which was a yeah. massive piece of it. So. Yeah. But we got a lot to talk about. Um, there's something. So on Sunday, don't. I'm not going to give the context of why we brought this up. But me and my sister were curious to see what Jar Jar Binks's backstory was. <laughs> Phil, I don't remember. Did I send you the link to this? Uh I, you did. I think you did. Did you read it? If you didn't, it's okay. I kind of skimmed over it. Okay. So Jar Jar Binks' dad has a messed up backstory. Now, I didn't think he had a dad until I found out about this comic strip. Dude, this is fucking funny. George R. Binks. <laughs> they go on a adventure, like a family trip. And what ends up happening is Jar Jar gets him stranded on an island. Well, the dad's so tired of it, he puts a gun to his head and legitimately tries to kill himself. Uh. But what was even worse is the mom says, don't do it, George. You have Jar Jar. And then he pulled the trigger. (laughs) The comic strip is so fucking wild. Um, (laughs) I just, for Star Wars fans who are like, what the fuck? This is, it's probably not canon. I'll be honest. Yeah. There's no way in hell this is canon, but this is like a legit Star Wars comic. It's like $11 on eBay, and I will be ordering this thing. Um, I also bought something this week, guys. I bought the PlayStation Portal. I gave it. Oh, really? I bought huh. one. Uh, I wanted to try it. You um, gave so much I did give shit pushback to it. on that. There's a reason I bought it. Obviously, I'm not publicly talking about that yet, but. There's a reason I bought it, and it was more for me to be able to have time with my wife more, but be able to sit on the couch and play. I still don't think it's the best thing. I still think the smartest thing would have been to just make a digital PSP where you can just... Oh, for sure. You know, yeah. and also have that feature. And I'm guessing that's... If they do another one, that's that's what they'll do. I got it on sale. Um, it's fucking awesome. It's pretty cool. It's cool. It, it doesn't work greatly sometimes. Especially if you play a multiplayer game. Uh, I don't know if it's just my eyes or playing Call of Duty on there is really not the best thing <laughs> in the world. But um, I like it. So I'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about the Black Ops 6 beta. I was going to say, uh, did you play anything else? I played three than? games on it. I played Black Ops 6. I played Fortnite because I wanted to try a beta. I wanted to try a dedicated multiplayer game that is not in beta. And then I won- I played Star Wars Outlaws also on there. to oh, see. Okay. So a game that wasn't online, a game that was in you know still in development because i betas are tough to tell because sometimes it's laggy because it is a beta yeah and then other times i can't tell if it's my wi-fi and then same thing like Fortnite. i know they're dedicated i never get lag or anything on Which there so also i want to ask you yeah because now it's officially released and i've been seeing not so great things about it what's your definitive review on star wars Outlast? uh so great thing because we were going to talk about that so our final verdict in review um so phil's still not beating it uh he was sick yeah. couldn't beat it but he's allowing me to talk spoilers on it because I don't think he cares. So 
I'm going to talk spoilers about Star Wars Outlaws. Um, it there's not really a lot to spoil. I'll be honest with you. Like there's things in here that I'm like, yeah, that 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 was obvious that this was probably going to appear in there. Um, still an eight. Still an eight. That's crazy. And I'm still like even after beating it, I've like I thought after I beat it, I was like, hey, I'm not going to really touch this game anymore. I've gone back every single day this week since I've beaten the game and continued to play it. Um, so and and mostly it's because when you beat the game. They actually give additional story ad or story missions to go through, so it's like epilogue stuff. Like you learn a little bit more about the droid, you learn more about like this character, and you just do little things with them. But I'm also really addicted to the sabak, like the gambling in there. So I've been playing a lot of sabak, and when you beat the game, there's a lot more sabak to do. So I've been going to each planet and like taking out the high rollers and stuff. So like I just faced the land of Calrissian, oh. and I fin and I beat him in sabak first try. By cheating, but that's the whole point. You're Dude, supposed to cheat. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, when I first started, and they put you through like the sabak tutorial. Yeah, there's just like a random uh, little table that you could play in before you go to like the market and everything. And the fur, uh, the very first world, literally lost for two hours straight on sabak. I had Whoa. no clue what I was doing. <laughs> really, I, but I was just like, I was literally, I had that gambler's fallacy. I'm like, I gotta win one. Oh, yeah. I've it's lost so bad. Once. The start of an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I mean, you can gamble on a lot. No, that card game is actually pretty fun. Yeah, it is really cool. Once you get to learn it, and like, especially with the cheating, because the more and more you do stuff, you <laughs> learn about. So I'm gonna. Fu- I'm gonna kill you. I I'm know. gonna kill you. You coughed all last week, and you coughed this week. Trying. If, if you cough again, you're in trouble. You're going in the closet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair Don't enough. Over your mouth. I'm just gonna have to. Yeah, you're just gonna literally sit there. Okay. Well, you gotta be careful. All right. I will. I will tape you up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So my final verdict. Yeah, Phil. it's still. It's still an eight. Yeah, I love you, Phil. Yeah. It's no. still an eight. I think you're still at a six for what yeah. you got to play more of. Um. Nothing in the story really swayed me one way or the other. But the way that I kind of look at this, and it's funny, the reason that, you know, for people who don't know our rating score, we don't give sevens because you said it's a comfort number. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because a lot of reviews I saw were sevens. Like almost every single one was a seven. Yeah. And I did feel, honestly, like when, like it goes back to our rating score that that is a comfort number. Because you asked me, I don't think you asked me on the podcast, if I could give it a seven, would I? What did, what answer did I give you? What I, I asked can't you not on the podcast, but um, the other day. Yeah, you said you'd give it a seven point five. Yeah, yeah, I, and that's like where I feel. And I think if you could give it a seven, would you give it a seven? I think like seven minimum. Seven minimum. or like the maximum, right? Okay. Like yeah. I still think it's a a six. Six, yeah. But like, if you could give a seven, would you, or would you still go with your six? I would still go with my six. Fair enough. Because I would go with a seven point five, round up to an eight, obviously. But there's issues with the game. There's no, there's no disagreeing with that. But the thing is, is this is kind of one of those games that I hope succeeds, because it feels like one of those we we nailed it. We nailed what this is. A sequel mm. can be bigger. And that's what I imagine. That's how a lot of these games were developed back in the day is first game's good, solid, fun. Next game's always better. Uncharted, uh, the first Tomb Raider remake. Um, I, I would even say Star Wars Fallen Jedi. Uh, the first one was fun and cool, mm-hmm. but the second one was way better, immensely better. Um, so I, 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 th- yeah. I think I saw someone did a video this week and I really like, I can't remember the name of the person, but he said, we need more 7 out of 10 games. And the reason he said that is because he said a lot of these 7 out of 10 games are starters. It's the start of a franchise where sometimes they don't get the big but the, the immense budget that they need or the immense talent that they need to launch off. Even if it is a Star Wars game or even if it is a Marvel game, they don't get these uh, big budgets or the, the talent that they need. They get enough but not, not all the way because some of these studios or some of these higher-ups don't believe in the projects that they're going to develop, even if it is based off a giant IP. And part of me kind of agrees with that. I mean, a lot. if you look back in the day, like I, I love the PS3. The PS3 is like one of my favorite games. Uh, game, uh, what is it called? Generation. Gaming, gaming generations of all time. But there is a lot of 7 out of 10s on there. Army of Two, that first game, 7 out of 10. 40th, oh, 40th day, oh man. 
It's fucking 10. It's like a two hour game. It doesn't matter. It's a seven out of 10, I think. It's an awesome you, you game. You can't say that you give a, a game a seven out of 10 just based off how long it is. If the well, not, not just on great, the story. If the the gameplay is decent. Great, if the gameplay yeah, is great. Not that great. The, and also, you had split screen. It was such a, lot a of games good had game. Split screen. I don't. I I ran through that game it's multiple awesome. times. Yeah, it's, it's fun. So much fun. I, I wouldn't go. About, what would you give easy it? Eight point five. If you can give it a seven, would you? The first arm, the army of two, the second one, I would give a higher score. But and they had the customization on all the guns. You could put it in gold. Think, the thing was badass. I think if I if I had to give it a score, I would give it an eight because okay. I really liked the. Uh, the biggest thing that sold me on it was the aggro mechanic. Exactly. The aggro was cool. You didn't yeah. see but, anything. But there's games that. like that that are a lot of people would say are seven out of ten. Yeah. You disagree, but that that's fine. But Kane and Lynch is another one. Kane and Lynch is a fucking seven out of ten. Yeah. Awesome fucking cool you concept. What, uh, but that game is going back and playing it. That I had I had rose tinted glasses on that fucking yeah, game. Yeah, no, that game was terrible. But you know what was fun about it? Was the uh, multiplayer? I don't know if you ever played. I played it. the multiplayer. Yeah. It was so cool. the the whole concept of Ken and Lynch's multiplayer was just like it was cops and robbers, but the robbers had the opportunity to double cross each other. Yep. For the bigger score mm-hmm. for themselves, and that's how you ranked up. Yep. So it was always this kind of like who's going to pull the trigger kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, to kind of round back to Star Wars Outlaws, uh, one of the biggest like struggles that I see a lot of the industry is the um when you get a game like this and it does like like you said it's seven out of ten right mm-hmm. they look at it and they look at the more of the concept more so than like the execution of the product and so what i hope is that they don't go back and just be like oh you know this game did poorly because you're not a jedi i actually I hope liked, they, i absolutely agree with that i actually you? really like uh, more jedi stuff or no because I, I like the fact that you're not playing as a Jedi. Yeah. Uh, I would like them to just do more, kind of like last time we were talking about what game that we would create in mm-hmm. Star, Wars, Star Wars universe would not be Jedi or Sith, it'd be Bounty Hunter. But, so, give it but, that but like this, because you're in that world. So Yeah. So like to me, the uh, I just hope that because of the way it's getting reviewed and just how people are viewing it, that they don't just ditch out on the whole idea of like, oh, the Star Wars universe is not good unless there's a Jedi in it. Or you can't make a yeah. good story based on like a person who's in a set circumstance. Yeah, The world is so rich, and the last thing I want them to do is to dip out on the idea of like a different type of cave S. And I actually really like the character throughout the game. I got to play a little bit more throughout this week. Um, my thoughts on the gameplay didn't really change. No, the gameplay doesn't yeah. change. Yeah, I, I knew like the moment from the first hour, you're going to be Which playing the same way. Which is funny because I was telling Phil, and I think I told you off air, uh, it's based off a of build off Beyond Good and Evil 2. Which, did you ever play Beyond Good and Evil back in the day on the PS2? No. It, it's, you almost fucking, did you see that? He almost just went and coughed. He almost just went and coughed. Yeah, almost. Watch yourself, Phil. Watch yourself. Um, to finish up our thoughts, uh, I, I'm going to spoil something real fast. Really cool that Darth Vader shows up in it. Oh, uh, really? I really like it. So the person you're going to rob, it ends up that he is working for Darth Vader. And the, re- the what they're robbing them for is actually inf- is blackmail on every leading Imperial officer. They think it's money. But when they get it, it's like this cube thing. And they find out it's like all the blackmail you possibly could do. So it's like people one-upping each other. There's a couple other things that I'll kind of leave until you get to beat the game, but mm-hmm. overall, I like the twists and turns. I thought it was cool. Uh, there is one final mission, like the final heist. Mm-hmm. It actually is a little bit different. You actually get some big set pieces. Which oh, is, that's cool. Which is cool. So I'm more interested now in the 7 out of 10 conversation, though, and I want to ask you guys, what are games that you feel had a good concept, but you really wish it got a sequel for whatever reason it could be? could be from any generation could be from when you were a kid it could be uh your teenage years could the be order. now the order 1886 yeah yeah Ooh, that's a good choice yeah do you know they were gonna make a sequel for it no it was yeah. gonna be jack the ripper yeah Are you that sad? was supposed to be like Extremely a movie sad. that was like the first kind of movie game yep. that i saw that they really try to push yeah. out right yeah no yeah. the order that i think that's like the number one 
one for me. Uh, to go with another one on PlayStation All Stars, the Super Smash Brothers club. Uh, I thought oh, that was yeah. a cool concept for it, so I like that. Would you guys want another Army of Two? Going back to that, I would want have, another Army of Two. If they did it good, yeah. yeah. What studio made that? Do you guys remember? EA. EA did. Oh, I thought yeah. it was. Yeah, it was. It was published by EA. I just can't remember yeah. if it was. No, it wasn't Visceral. I don't remember what studio that was like. It was. I feel like that was like one of the only games that. I think there's three of them. There was. I I don't. I, I never think they played the all third one. Yeah. Did not. I think they got made less. Army of Two, the fortieth day, and then two, uh, which and I really like. Uh, that one. It's called the Devil's Cartel or something. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. I don't even think you play as the main characters though, right? I think they're the villains, right? Mm, the the what is it? The smaller guy. Yeah. In the first game. He's the villain, right? Yeah, he's yeah. the villain. Yeah. I just remember that that was one of the few games, but like for me, like that game would never get made today. Like no. I look at even Dead Space, like <laughs> where's a Dead Space Four? Yeah. You know. Nah, they're not making games like that anymore. No, they're not. Which so, kind of reason why you're out. out. I've, I've just yeah. fallen out of video games, I, and I, I don't like blame you. They're not making games that are just no. It's mostly badass f- balls to the wall kind yeah. of like this is freaking awesome. Besides, I mean, the new game that's coming out, Warhammer. Yeah, which we're all very excited. We will be reviewing it. I think you're still debating on getting it. I think right. Or I'm gonna re- wait till the review and see okay. what people think about it. Okay. But mm-hmm. I'm leaning more towards it because I mean, I want to. Yeah, that game Aliens looks badass. With yeah, a chainsaw sword. And like, yeah, would you guys want to be in that world? No, I know it's a no, shitty no. world, I, but like, that no. world is terrible. I know, it's <laughs> a god awful. Would but like, okay, let me let me rephrase this. If you could be in that world and not die, but like be able to like just rip aliens in half and like you know those rage rooms people can go to where like it's like he like break glass and shit like that do you understand what a space marine goes through to become a space marine yeah i've also seen that yeah, what their lifespan is like completely... 17 minutes or something like that it looks terrible you gotta have yeah. like 17 different implants you pretty much have to be like the most to like survive in that world you have to be like the most apathetic okay. person ever let me i'm gonna pitch four worlds for you guys and you guys have to tell me which world you'd rather live in okay okay space marines is one of them gears of war like lamb bent Locust, all that shit. So, like by Gears of War three, like where it's like there's no military or anything left. Uh, Bioshock, but after Rapture fell. So what am I, am I? What character am I in? You're just a fucking human. You're, You're just, just a, a fucking person. And I'm already then, leaning towards Bioshock. What's the yeah. fourth one? Uh, the fourth one would be The Last of Us with the clickers. <sighs> Bioshock. Why Bioshock? Huh? Why? Why Bioshock? Why he's thinking? Uh, it's just the. It feels like the easiest one to survive. It's not like the people are monsters; they're just crazy. Yeah. You know. Speaking of Bioshock, another so game. Monsters, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Bioshock, though, another game that would have never been made today. I know oh, yeah. they're trying to make a new one, but you know what I mean. Like that's another one that I don't think would have been made today by a big studio. I think. I mean, they're still making it. The only reason why it hasn't come yeah. out is just because it's just been development development and just wanting to perfect it yeah no, which is true but again i don't know like i just like there's so remember singularity like they had so many games like bioshock legendary stop <laughs> can i be honest i bought that like two weeks ago you bought PS3. legendary yeah dude that I, I you know what legendary liked... is it's no. like bioshock but with like what uh like greek yeah, Greek mythology. monsters so, and stuff. Okay. You play as like a person who like steals Pandora's box from a museum and it like activates or so something Kratos. like that. <laughs> yeah, basically God of War with a gun. Yeah. Oh. But in, with Bioshock type. And where were they? I think you're like in New York. Yeah. They okay. legitimately it's not a good game. Like, yeah. Oh, it's not a good game, but it's a cool game. Yeah. The first set piece is like really cool. The cinematic. Yeah. You literally walk out of the museum and there's griffins flying, snatching people from the street and you're like, whoa, this is yeah. crazy. Okay. Yeah. But I, mean, I like the concept. Yeah. yeah, you said Bioshock. Did you? What were you gonna go? I'm gonna with? go with Last of Us. Last of Us. Okay. I think it's honestly, I, I think that was the one. I was like, you know what? Out of all of them, I think that's the one I could survive and like live off. Of. Like, who's one. the who, Bill? Is Bill the one that makes all the traps and shit? And yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like he lives a pretty good life. I mean, by cool. himself with his hand. Um, <clears throat> remember, he has the magazine that Ellie finds and steals from him. That's so, right. All right. Uh, any material back then. Yeah, and a situation yeah. like that, that's good material. Yeah, yeah. Anything else you guys want to talk about before we jump into the main topics? 
no, I think Actually, I got everything. I, I, I you got something? I have one question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw it out there, man. What would be your last meal? My last meal. Ooh, that's a good question. Okay, because this is just on my head because my wife was showing me pictures of it this morning. Waffle House is waffles. Ooh. Like the all-star combo. Like she showed me like pictures of the Damn. Waffle House waffles with like, it was like doubled up and there was mm. fucking butter and all this shit and syrup. And I told her, I was like, so we're going tomorrow morning, right? And she goes, I don't know. I was like. You have to go tomorrow morning at like four in the morning. Oh, dude, morning. that's my dad's favorite time to go. That's the best time to go. <laughs> so, but honestly, that that's the one off the top of my head right now. Um, breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. I love syrup. Like, you know, uh, that's Anthony Bourdain's one of his favorite. Restaurants. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, but you that's to, insane. Well, it's not insane because Anthony Bourdain was not a pretentious chef. No, I, I well, I mean, I, I guess that is true. Like he, he, I don't know a like, lot about him, oh. so like that's why I'm excited for that movie because I'm I gonna love, be able to learn Anthony a lot. Bourdain. His books. If you ever get around to having some time to read, read his books. You should. Uh, so you should send me links to some so I can buy them for my wife for her bookshelf. So, because she loves him, but she probably never read the books. So it's so good, so good. What about Rest you, Phil? Peace. Homemade enchiladas. Ooh, Ooh, red or green? So we do. My family does it differently. We do it layered, and we do it green. Ooh. So we do like a uh, corn tortillas. Yeah. And we just layer it, just tortillas, chicken, tortillas, chicken, almost like a lasagna. Oh. And do green sauce on top with okay. white, with like that white cheese. Yeah. Oh, you put a little bit of Coquita. olives on top, and it's just so good. Dude, mm. that's amazing. I love enchiladas. You? Pasole. Really? From like no. homemade, specific place, or just... I mean, homemade, if you know how to make yeah. it. Any, any, I mean, Pozole can always vary when it comes to red yeah. chili. So if you got the death penalty, this is what we would all like, ask I would for. Want, like, yeah. Like, yeah. I need to have, like, good red chili in it, though. I love it, that. It cannot be just, like, some... Yeah. No, I get that. The, these are, That was a great question. You know, every time you're on, I want you to come up with, like, a random question to ask at the I end of the come up with random question. Yeah. And then you get mad at me, like, no, we have to stick to the... Like, oh, no, that's why I asked this time. <laughs> I, I only get mad when we don't run through the topics, but... I'm whatever this week because I'm fucking tired. So, guys, I actually made up a... So, let's jump into the main topics because I came up with a title for it. It's called Geeked Up. Geeked Up. Okay. Okay. So, this is our review and news segment. Uh, Me and Tyler watched a short film. uh, I've been wanting to cover a little bit more short films is the best way to do it, uh, called Paralysis. Yep. Uh, It's from director and writer Jacob Hubbard. Uh, He's a friend of the channel. He sent me it, and I said, yeah, we'll watch it and talk about it. Phil did not get time to talk about it. Or watch it. Um, overall, I liked it. I thought it was solid. I thought the performances were the best part of the film, though. And I like the the full circle thing of it, without getting into spoilers specifically yeah, of don't, how... Don't spoil anything yeah, about it, this. Specifically how it starts. And I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. It opens up on the water and shit. And it's then like slow. the way it ends on the water, yeah. I was like, huh. That was my one thing. It's pace. pace my, the pacing was probably my biggest issue with it. Um, I felt it was a little bit too long. Um... My only biggest issue yeah. with it was one actor. and Which one? Uh, the girl in the pink dress. The blonde, right? Yeah. The, the one who's like the crux, like the problem, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, it's only seen, and the only reason why is because it felt like it almost took me out of like, over oh, the top. this seems like a short film because mm-hmm. it seemed like she was reading the script like, yeah. word for word. It wasn't like a natural mm-hmm. film. Where the other two felt a little bit more natural. Oh, yeah, like the main... Mm-hmm. actors fantastic she's great yeah so fantastic. is the so is the guy like even the relationship that they build kind of between them i didn't know what to expect from this to be honest with you because when I it started know. i was like did he make a romance yeah uh. like like because i didn't know but like paralysis sounds like a fucking horror film to me mm-hmm. so i was like oh this is this is interesting so jacob we support you good yeah, luck great job man. can't wait great to see job. he sent me his, his next script um do you want to read it if you let if he gives me permission sure yeah cool there we go do you want to read it sure have you ever read a script no no? No. So you never read the scripts I gave you? You never gave me any scripts. <laughs> I've always asked for them every time. You never give them to me. Shout me out. Did I ever give, give you one or did I just tell you what to do? You've never given me one. Yeah. You know what? No, now I remember why I never gave you guys scripts. Because I didn't. Because you're greedy? No. Get them, Phil. Because I didn't think you'd be able to memorize the lines. What do you mean? Oh, wait, like, oh, for, like, your short yeah. films? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you yeah. give me a script. I thought you meant from, like, just another... No, 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 no. 
Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about like just other scripts? Were you talking about my short films? Oh, your short films? Yeah. Did you ever give me one? I think you did. Did I? Yes. But did you even have a line? Because sometimes I wouldn't even write lines in there. I would just be like, say something along these lines. Yeah, you would. But yeah. I think you did give me something. Okay. I, I don't remember for yours. I don't think I did. I think you I might. just told you what to do. Um, I found a bunch of my old scripts. I found one that was actually for a feature film the other day. And that feature film is so fucked up because it came out. We wrote it right around when Tusk came out. Oh, God. And so I wanted to make a Kevin Smith-esque Christmas horror film about two burglars who go into rob a house. And this family they go to rob turns out they're cannibals. And every night the shutters come down like the purge and they can't leave. Hmm. And it's fucked up. Hmm. They have uh, an eighteen-year-old child that is this that still dresses like a baby, wears a diaper, everything. Oh, so oh, this that's... almost reminds me, like some, you know which one I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Phil? Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of stuff. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up, but uh, I loved it. Um, kind of like kills. Uh, he'll have eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I. It's it's wild though because of like the house we live in how it has the shutters beyond back boat like a uh, back um, in the sunroom so I'm like I could actually make it now I have the shutters like that's how we could do is they sneak in through the back and you know but whatever maybe one day um, jumping into this we also watched the Sonic three trailer this week um, I the first movie surprised me. And I only gave it credit because they actually delayed the movie to go fix the fucking visual effects on him because he looked like ass. I don't know if you remember that. I remember that. Yeah. And then, so then I watched the first movie. I'm like, oh, that, that was actually like not bad. Second movie was awesome besides one scene. I still think the second one is probably the best video game movie in terms of what it nails down. There's just like one 10 minute spill where it's like only humans. And I'm just like, this is so fucking boring. I do not know what the fuck they're trying to do. But Sonic 3, you tell me, you throw in Shadow the Hedgehog, who I love that video game back in the day. Did we all play the Shadow the Hedgehog mm -hmm. video oh, game? GameCube. Yeah, with the guns. Yep. Do you think we're getting, do you think Shadow gets a gun in this? I hope so. I hope. I'm going to say no. Yeah, no, yeah I, yeah, I don't think he does. But the thing that they're showing in the trailer is that little girl. And do you guys know Shadow's backstory? Mm -mm. So that little girl's name is Maria. She gets shot. So the fans on the internet have been wondering, will Maria get shot in front of Shadow in this? And there's a part where you see him kind of over a body. I'm like, holy fuck, I think they're really going to shoot her. That's I crazy. think they're going to shoot her in front of Shadow. And that's why he goes all belligerent and, you know, crazy. So I'm excited to see. Like, I, just, I mean, uh, if you're putting Keanu Reeves as voicing, I mean. But can I be honest? I'm not sold on him voicing shadow if i'm oh, being oh yeah. that is the one thing i'm not so like it's only like three or four lines i need to see the full picture to see how he actually sounds but it just it's just keanu to me like i, I don't i would have preferred and maybe it's just because like this is the voice i i would have preferred like a john berthnall from uh the walking dead as shane or yeah. the guy who plays the punisher i guess a lot of yeah. people know i think his voice would have fit shadow so well but keanu i mean it, it's cool. Like Shadow looks badass as fuck. Like, yeah. What What did you I think mean, of the trailer, I thought, Tyler? I thought it was really cool. I've never seen any of them. Do you want to now, or are you just like, oh, I'll just watch the third one? Uh, if I get around to it, yeah, I'll watch just the third. Okay. You? Yeah. I was gonna say, uh, the trailer did a really cool little reference to the Shadow the Hedgehog like intro sequence too, as well, mm -hmm. of him walking up on the thing while everything's on fire. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was like a really good callback. I'm like, wow, that looks pretty. Well, you know, like, it's really cool. Shot. The director of the Sonic movies, his first job ever was animating Shadow for the Shadow the Hedgehog game. That oh. was his job. He was the cinematic director for that game. That's pretty that's, cool. That's, that's why. Neat. So it's a it's full fucking circle thing really here cool. now. Yeah. Because it was literally legacy. shot for shot. So yeah. I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Is there any other Sonic character? What Sonic games did you guys grow up on? Sonic Heroes was like the main I, one for I was, me. I mean, I, did you grow up with Sonic or no? Not really. Like I... Um, I knew about Sonic growing up. I mm -hmm. played like maybe one or two games. Always like recognize it for like how Mario yeah. is. It's like that classic. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's a classic. 
but I never really like. You never played. got into. You never got the Sonic Heroes or the Sonic Battle or Sonic mm-hmm. Adventure. Damn, yeah. I, I you did though, right? Yeah, so I played Sonic Heroes and then I played uh, Sonic Adventures two. Okay, and I, all I did in Sonic Adventures two was like raise my chows. <laughs> I love so, the little chows. You see the chows in the trailer? No, I didn't. There's a part where you see chow, chows are like these little fucking cute things you can yeah. like raise. And, gotcha. Yeah. It's like the Sonic's uh, Tamagotchi. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's a, bit, a great way to put it. No, man. I I really... I was surprised by this trailer. Like, I, it came out Tuesday and I reacted to it. And I was like, that, that looks awesome. I hope they fucking deliver. Uh, I love Idris Elba's Knuckles. Like, he is just so... Like, he just plays that role so well and my favorite line is here and he goes oh this hedgehog looks way stronger than the last one i fought and he's like that was me yeah he's like sonic's like i'm standing right here guy (laughs) yeah so it looks fun uh speaking of sonic i i I just like you know this is a video game movie is there any video game movies that haven't been developed from iconic characters like that that you would like to see like for me crash bandicoot is one that i would like to see sly cooper oh that's a great one you I always hate these questions because it's like always trying to think of like a character right off the top of my head. And you, that's why it's so perfect. He said Sly yeah, Cooper. You just go back into like yeah. your childhood. I like, know. What are I'm some games to. that you really enjoyed playing? I'm trying to. I have another one. Uh, Jack and Daxter. Jack and Daxter. Ooh, Jack and Daxter. Would, would you guys awesome. want these live action though or anime or animation inspired? Animation for sure. Yeah. I think I mean, Ratchet and Clank would be a good one. Yeah. Ooh. They technically did a movie. They animated one. Oh yeah, it was awful. Right. It was fucking awful. <laughs> so let's just pretend we forgot it. Yeah. And I actually animation for sure, but I also think Sonic the Hedgehog has done like the best of blending the two. Yeah. Yeah. The, the it does look really cool. You know what would be? I don't know what the story would be, so don't ask. But Sackboy, I think Sat or Le- Little Big Planet, like the creativity you could do because like they made a Lego movie and it yeah. it worked. So what about do- Knack? Do you remember what Knack was? That. What's the next question? <laughs> <laughs> um, I had, oh, fuck, man, I forgot. I had, like, one other thing to bring up with that. And I yeah, man, and then now you're thinking about Knack. Yeah, no, seriously, like, like why? he said Knack, <laughs> and it, like, popped into my head, and I was like, what the fuck was I going to say now? <laughs> like, that just ruined it. No, that's okay. That's okay. It was a little mm. cough. It was a little cough from a laugh. <laughs> The little cough from a laugh. I know. I'm like, I'm like, uh, what's his name from Toy Story? Wheezy. Wheezy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But should we call you, because he's wheezing. Yeah. Should we call you coffee? Coffee? Sure. Yeah. I could use some coffee right now. You didn't drink coffee this morning? No. Oh. So what are you drinking today? I saw you stopped at Starbucks. Yeah. I don't like Starbucks, even though I used to work there. I don't like their coffee, but I cannot get enough of the refreshers. The Speci- refreshers are really specifically good. Specifically the pink drink. The pink drink? I don't care if it's a girly drink it doesn't matter no, i drink girly i drink girly delicious. alcoholic yes. drinks so like yeah. who, who fucking so cares good. man I, I get it i freaking love those pink drinks but i love i only it. get them from like time to time yeah well post malone had a new album come out uh two weeks ago so good. uh phil's not a fan of post malone nor country so he's gonna step aside for a second uh feel free to ask us questions think of questions to ask me and tyler about the album um, me and Tyler are going to review the F1 trillion, trillion, the long, long bed, bed version, which yeah. is 27 songs. And, uh, let's give our scores real fast. Tyler. Oh, nine, nine, nine. Easy without Yeah. Without question. Yeah. Nine. So I was at a nine before I listened to the long bed version because I was like, ah, I would have liked more songs with just him. Then he came out the long bed version. 10. Uh, Post Malone is my personal favorite artist working right now. I love every album of his, I think gets better. And specifically like the last one he did Austin where it was like slower and not really like what he had done prior. I was like, this is his best album. And then this one comes out where this one has the hype songs that you expect, but like country style. But then he has those slower ones that like really hit me. And then the ones that he just does by himself just, I don't know. There's just something special about it. I have listened to this album. I have not listened to a single other song the last two weeks. I have only had this album playing. And I'm sure my wife fucking hates it. She's probably annoyed at this fucking album. Because when I'm playing music in the house, this is all I play. That's when hard to get annoyed of it. It's an it's hour great. and 30 minutes yeah, long. Yeah, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. She likes the, the, she likes the album. But, like, you know, Every sometimes song. she want to play other things. But that's all I'm... 
playing. So, uh, Tyler, I'm curious. Like, what was your favorite song on here? Like, if you had to go with, like, I know there's a lot, so I'll say, like, top three. I don't want to see. It's hard. I I thought about this. I don't have. It's a tough. Song. It's tough. I have songs that I've saved, but overall, like every song, like I'll play the album front to back. Same. Same. Without skipping a song. Same. Like every song is really, really well thought out. Yeah. Every song feels mm-hmm. like it's a good country song. And then I even thought about this on my way here. This album almost feels like uh, um, kind of like how Hybrid Theory is. Yeah. But in a different way where. Hybrid Theory was Linkin Park's, you know, the rap mixed with the rock. Even though this isn't rap mixed with country, it's coming from an artist that started as a rap, rap artist, artist. yeah. And his progression, and now he's like, it fits him perfectly. I know, and I like how, I don't remember which song it is that's that sings it, but he has lyrics where he's basically like, I used to rap about this, this, and this. Now I'm talking about this, this, and this. Yeah. And so my question to yeah. you guys then, cause like, obviously I'm not a country yeah. uh, listener. I don't like country at all. No. To me, a lot of the music just sounds the same, which I'm sure you hate when I'm driving to yeah. San Diego. Comic so, cause that's all I play is country music. <laughs> if you had to pick two songs from that album, album for someone like me, what two songs would you pick that actually said it? That would go against my ideology that, like, that is a great country Losers. sounds the same. Losers is one of them with Jelly Roll. Um, Mexico's great. Yeah, I Mexico's don't think he'd great. like Mexico, though. Uh, yeah, I, I, it, yeah, there's, I mean, if you're not a fan of it, I would say well, Losers would be the first one. Honestly, that... What Don't Belong to Me. I think, I think that would be the song because it is country. It's, but it's the lyrics that really hit. It's the lyrics for sure, but it's also it falls in that realm of a slow country song. Yeah, and also slow won't always like hit people. Yeah, and I think you'd like that one. That's my opinion. But okay. losers, I do agree with losers. I, I do you like Jelly Roll or no? You've never listened to it. Uh, I heard like a couple of the songs. Uh, so yeah, I'd probably say you go with losers. And what was the other one you went with? Uh, Mexico, but it's not my favorite song, but it's just a song. Yeah. I would. Uh, I would say What Don't Belong to Me, and to be different than saying Losers, I'd probably say... Mm, I know you've heard I Had Some Help, though, the Morgan Wallen one. Yeah. I don't think you cared for it. Yeah. So that would have been the one. I I keep going back to that one, because Ren, the one who, you know, friended the channel, the one I also do a podcast with, he d- doesn't like Post Malone. He doesn't like Country. He fucking loves this album. Yeah, it's fantastic. The only song he doesn't like is the Dolly Parton one. Really? And that's one of my favorites. It's because he doesn't like how Dolly's voice sounds. Okay, this is a little fair. too auto-tuned for him. Which, nah, like, I, okay, I, I when he told me that's the fair. auto-tune part, I re-listened to it. I'm like, yeah, it's probably my, my least favorite song on the album because of that. But, my, yeah. My own, that's it's funny question. because the songs that, I mean, I previously just said, I won't skip them. But after listening to it multiple times, the songs I do skip being contradiction to myself are actually the singles that release. I think those songs are actually the weakest ones out of the whole. Oh, album. his last ones? Hit the... the singles that release. Oh, like album. I had I had some help. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, those have been around for fucking ever now. But like I don't I didn't listen to them like that. I like uh, when they released, I was like, oh yeah. He's coming out with a country album. Cool. And I think <laughs> stacking up all the songs against those singles. Yeah. I don't care I, for them. You know, it's funny. The Morgan Wallen one I still love, but the the Luke Combs one that he released prior, I didn't. I thought it was fine. And same with Pour Me a Drink. The Missing You Like Crazy or Missing You Like This Luke Combs one I thought was way better. Um, I want to change one of my answers. Uh, listen to Two Hearts. Two Hearts. Two Hearts, yeah. I, I think that one was fucking great. Um, Tyler, my favorite one was Fallen in Love and Write About You. Those are my two favorites. Um, probably because my wife. But I, I it just like listening to those just reminds me of my wife and mine relationship. That's fair. I thought it was great. Um, yours, uh, if I had a daughter, probably break oh, that... my fucking heart. So he wrote a song <laughs> to so his good. daughter's so future good. wife or future husband. His daughter is like two right now. Mm-hmm. But it's such a cute song. Not even cute. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of in your feels. Like kind of like the one Eminem just wrote to his daughter. Yeah. But like a little bit less depressing. <laughs> Yeah. Way so. less depressing. It's very, uh, I'm going to butcher like the lyrics, but essentially he's like, just because you attach your name 
your last name to hers does not yeah. make her yours. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then like one of the lyrics in there is her dress might be white today, but her first dress was pink. Yeah. And like things like that, that just like very well just thought hit. out. Yeah. Very well thought out lyrics. So, Fantastic so well done. I love the album. Post Malone, we love you. Come on the podcast. Whereas, I mean, that'd be crazy. Post, <laughs> if you, listen to me. I know you like Magic the Gathering. Let's talk Magic the Gathering. You can sell me on how to play this fucking game because I've never understood it. I used to buy cards back in the day and I still don't understand how to play the fucking game. Come on this podcast. Teach me about Ma- Magic the Gathering. Teach us about Magic the Gathering. We will play you. You don't even have to come to Arizona. We will go to you. <laughs> I will figure out a way I will, to go to you. I will pay a ticket. I, I will pay a ticket. We will I mean, all pay a ticket to go visit you. You don't have to come for anything. No. I would love to meet you. I, I will bring awesome. you whatever you want to. Case of Bud Light. Yeah. So, yeah. Phil, you down for that? Yeah. Cool. I can learn about magic. He, what if he teaches you? Like, what if he, like, what if you fall in love with him? Because, like, you're not huge on his music, but, like, what if he's, like, uh, like, okay, like, I'll, I'll, I'll make this guy like my music there. I think he'd be, I just think he's a very genuine person. Oh, I've seen, like, his, very yeah, genuine. Like, like, I've seen a lot of these like interviews. Awesome dude. I remember I saw, like, a, what was it, a video clip of him being somewhere. And it was like this family and they had that special mm-hmm. needs person and they came up to him and they thanked him and he was like the sweetest yep, dude ever. I remember that. Yeah. That was like the coolest thing. I'm like, wow. You know, like I just, I, I love, I love when shit. artists aren't like above themselves, you know? Did you see what Jelly Roll did this last week? Mm-hmm. He was driving, I don't know what fucking city he was in for whatever concert, but he drove down the street and saw a lemonade stand with his two little girls. And he walks up and he goes, how much for lemonade? And they said 50 cents. And he gave him $700. He goes, just keep the change. And then the little girl comes back and she goes, my dad says he loves you. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I then, actually, you know, they got a picture with him and all that. I did that's a cool. similar thing the other day uh, right. when it was super hot outside. There was a lemonade stand in my neighborhood, two little girls. And I stopped. I saw them when I was leaving. I had to go to the grocery store and I came back. I'm like, it's hot as shit outside. And I pulled up and I was like, Harry, like, how much? You're like, oh, it's a dollar. Give him five dollars. It's like, keep the change. Not seven hundred dollars. I don't have money like that. Wish I could. But I would do stuff like that to even like delivery people, like people that deliver pizza or just a delivery person. I'd be like, how much is it? Here's a hundred dollar tip. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, wasn't there like a story? I heard of something with Jelly Roll where you went to like a prison and he was teaching people about music. Yep. And bought a bunch of instruments for a lot of the prison mates and yep. did some music with them. Like, I think stuff like that is just, like, going above and beyond and being, like, using your uh, your status and your Well, and he came from that. I mean, he did. Yeah. To positively impact your community and, like, the people around you is, like, such a huge You thing. really should listen to Losers. So. That's literally the whole concept so of the good. song, Phil. It's is a like, fantastic song. Yeah. So. And I actually didn't love it the first time I listened to it. Neither did I. I. It was good. I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like, it's a good but song. But it's like every time you listen to it, you're like... Oh, this hits. Oh, this every really, time, yeah. every time you listen to that album, and I, anybody that has not listened to it front to back without skipping, just listen to it front to back. And every single time you listen to it, every song gets that much better. Yeah, I love that. All right, we got uh, one more thing to talk about before we jump into the main topic, which is the Black Ops Six beta. I think I'm the only one that got to play it. Right? I know yeah. you're. You're. I, I get your sentiment. Your PS Five was it a PS Five that almost broke? Or yeah, it was PS, it was PS5 War. almost broke from Cold War. You can't. You, you, you called can't me play out. It this fucking asshole messages me. Pre orderer. That's what he calls me. A fucking pre orderer. Just fucking. I, I took offense to that. You never even <laughs> responded to me. I sent like. Didn't I send you like four messages back, like back to back? I was like, fuck you. <laughs> like, it felt like Xbox Live party chat where like someone would message you and be yeah. like, fuck you, little bitch, or whatever. And then you like send back and you just start going back and forth. But, um,. So I got to play it. I, I, there's, there's no hiding. I've been excited for this one. And I'll eat my fucking words if I do in six months when the game fucking sucks. I give it four. <laughs> four months? Okay. Maybe even less. Yeah. I was going to say the open beta is not available for Game Open Pass beta people. is... Right. No, it is. Is if it? You have the, if you have Game Pass, you can play the beta right now. Ah, so you if, know what? I might try which, today. But you know what's funny? I was talking to Alex yesterday. Mm-hmm. He downloaded it and was able to play it, and he hasn't pre-ordered the game. Interesting. Oh. Don't know how it works. Feel free to try it. Um, 
my biggest con to this beta, first off, is how fucking stupid it is to download the damn thing. You have to download Call of Duty. The everything. Oh yeah. They have that. And then you whole can manage hook. which installs you yeah. want to get rid of. Which is fucking stupid. But I played <laughs> don't even want to know that. I played ten hours yesterday of the Black Ops Six beta because I knew we were gonna be talking about it. I didn't want to just put two, three hours in. I wanted to play ten hours of this fucking beta. And I'll tell you I'm not playing anymore for the weekend for like multiple reasons. One, 10 hours. Yeah. One, I'm just exhausted. Two, I already hit max level. <laughs> <laughs> I hit max level in like four, Dude, but I kept I don't playing. remember the last time I hit like max. The level beta max level is only 20. You know what? I, just, I think just put it, it's 20. And then next weekend when it's open to everyone, it's 30. I think when uh, Call of Duty World at War had its open beta yeah. and you could hit level 20 and that, that's when I like hit it. Yeah, I, I went the fuck off. But I've said, like, and I was showing you gameplay this week. This is the Call of Duty that I've been... If you got a cough, you got a cough. It's okay. Yeah. I think I need a tissue. That's why I need it. I'll be right back. Okay. Just okay. make sure to shut the door when you come back. Because if it opens, I'm going to beat your ass. What? Coco? I'm going to beat everything. Um. So, Tyler, uh, Black Ops. I want you to ask me questions, obviously. But I was showing you clips, and I was like, this looks like the people who grew up with Max Payne. Yeah. So there is no third person mode yet in the beta, which is, that's fine. It'll be in the full game, but it's Max Payne first person. And it's funny because I started immediately when in the beta open and you could just tell everyone's playing around with the jumping yeah. and the omni movement. And the first few games, I'm not going to lie. I was not playing with it. I was just killing these fucking idiots because they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. It's like, you'd see someone jump and then like. There is ways to play against it. And that's one of the things that I was actually really impressed with was, again, everyone's going to learn how to play it. There will be people who are just tryhards with it overall. But the thing that really impressed me was sometimes if you fuck up jumping, you go a little bit too far and you can't hit them because it's like you're trying to. So say there's like a a door Mm -hmm. and then you're running and you hear shooting. A lot of people jump. Sometimes you over jump it and your guns on the opposite side of the wall but they can see your feet boom you're dead yeah so i like that you know it is a little it's easy but it's fun to hit the trick shots i was trying it with the sniper i was trying it with the shotgun it was it felt so satisfying to jump this way to a doorway and see two people and just fucking hit their kneecaps with the shotgun and just obliterate them and the thing i really like about the killing in here is the ragdoll effect There's a ragdoll effect to everything. Not like the cheap thing where it's like, oh, a grenade goes off and like you see their body fly. And then you even see the ragdoll effect. When you die, your character like falls over or like gets flown back and there's shit like that. And the way that it kind of dives into the kill cam is really cool. It feels like Black Ops 3 meets Vanguard in terms of the hit markers. Mm -hmm. I was, I'm in the minority. I, I actually didn't mind Vanguard. I thought Vanguard was a, cool game i just when it came out i didn't really have a lot of time to play it but i overall liked the hit markers and i like how it feels but biggest thing i can say the time to kill is amazing i loved the time to kill it always felt just right i never had an issue with like shooting someone and i never got frustrated where if i started shooting someone first they just turned around fucking to hit me yeah it always felt okay i feel good again this is a beta I might play the full thing. I was going to say. Uh, and they might change it. So One thing that I did see is that they have uh, proximity to chat when you do body shielding. That was yeah, what I was, was going to say. Trash talk. That was my question is how does that work? The bot- the shielding? Yeah. So when you come up behind someone, you can either, uh, what's the execution? Yeah. Is that yeah. what they're called? You can either execute them or take them as a body shield. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> but I think, I think you can only, and correct me if I'm wrong, audience, I think you can only body shield if you have a pistol on you. So if you don't have a pistol equipped, because no. I, I run overkill a lot, you can't body shield. Because I wasn't allowed to, I only body shield <laughs> maybe once, and that was because I had a pistol equipped and I ran out of ammo and I just got lucky. But it is kind of cool. I got body shielded fucking twice. That's funny. And let me tell you, the proximate, the, how do you say it? Proximity chat. Is funny as shit. Like, like you'd be talking all mad kind dude, of Dude, this shit. dude was talking, the, the two times I got body shield, the first time no one said anything, and then the second time I forgot about the chat, this dude's like, you're my bitch now. 
That's what he said to me. <laughs> and I mean, he, if you got body shield, that's that is adequate. And uh, I was talking to one of my other friends. He got body shielded, shielded, and it was like a twelve year old in the mic. He goes, "I'm risen you right now. I'm gonna riz you up in this bitch." Oh my god! Like so. Oh no. Those memories. The shit talking. Yeah, it this. brings me back to yeah like, earlier too. Yeah, so I dig it. it it's cool. I love the the chat and the movement. Um, but what questions do you guys have for me? Let's answer that again. I can only there's three yeah. maps, level up to twenty. Um, I think you can get the guns up to ten. At least that's what I could see. And I tried every gun. There's, okay. They they had three assault rifles, two SMGs. Which one? Sniping. Uh, I didn't. I only tried one of the snipers. The they had a auto and a bolt re- re- action. Really like it. It is not one hit. The you, bolt action? Yeah. So th- there was rumors that it was one hit You're no matter where that. you hit. It is fair, but I you can quick scope again. And I, I really like As that. As it should be. Yeah. So it was cool like to kind of bring back that stuff. But I, I like the sniping a lot. I like the feel of it. To be honest, there wasn't there was only three maps. And really only one of them you can snipe on. And honestly, that map sucks. Uh, so I didn't really play it a nah, lot. You can snipe on any map. Uh, yeah you can it's, yeah. it's called skill buddy. yeah but i love the shotgun so like on the smaller maps i'd rather oh, run sure. with the shotgun yeah oh other thing i like every class comes with a melee weapon it's not just the fucking gun button button oh. anymore so when you so your melee is that if you have the gun equipped but you can switch to a knife if you hold down the melee button and you oh, can run nice. around with a knife i really like that choice because i've always wondered i'm like most soldiers have a fucking knife why the hell do I have to equip it as my secondary or my primary? Like I've yeah, never, that makes sense. I've never liked that. So that one I really liked. Also the perks, the creative class is cool. So you know how there's like a red perk, blue perk, green perk, like different colored perks. Yeah. yeah. If you make your whole class all the red, you get an additional perk. Oh, that's cool. And it doesn't activate right away, but like if you get up to a certain amount of, I, I, I couldn't tell if it was like kills or score, or like you're just on fire. All of those are like times two. So, like, if you run Ghost, Scavenger, and, like, another thing, you get, like, an added bonus to all that. And it just makes you... Oh, it's but it kind never... of like a... You ever... What is it? In a Specialist. Yeah. That's what the whole Yeah, thing, it's kind of like that. It's like so, in uh, Modern yeah. Warfare 3, back when mm-hmm. you would either choose a score streak, a kill yeah. streak, or the Specialist. Yeah. And uh, it is score streaks right now. Um, okay. I think there was some rumors going around that you have a choice of a killer score streak. I hope there is. Because I, I did... They started doing that. Yeah, because the score streaks, dude. The UAV is a thousand. That's a lot. That's yeah. I feel like it's a little bit more. Balanced, that's like ten though. kills. It is. It it is more balanced. But you get so that's the other thing. It's not kills. It's eliminations. If you hit them a couple times, someone else finishes them. You get an elimination. So there's no um, assist anymore. I don't mind that because it does help build up points and shit. So it, you are fast to get them. And there's a mini UAV that pulses around you if you want to do that one. That uh, one's like 650. Gotcha. I don't know if they'll change the scores and stuff, but yeah, I was kind of shocked when I saw 1,100. What the fuck? I was like, anytime I remember. Did the skill ceiling really move that high? Yeah. So <laughs> I remember it, playing previous Call of Duty and it seemed like, at, I mean, that's what everybody's yeah. going to choose as their first perk. Because yeah. It's like everyone quick. could get a UAV. And yeah, I'll and tell you right like now. There's like five UAVs and you're like, okay, well, you constantly have UAVs up. I I really liked like part of it's kind of cool because there's not as many now, so and you've AVs in that game are abused. <laughs> well, they're abused, but they're also super beneficial. Oh yeah, they are. Um, any other questions? How excited are you for zombies? So zombies isn't in beta, but there's two maps launching. One of the maps looks like shit, and I'm not. That's the one that they showed off at that whole Call of Duty Next event. I, it looked awful. It looked awful. It did. It killed any excitement I had for zombies. I'll be honest with you. Hmm. But I'm only gonna go off what the streamer said. They had almost. They had so much shit turned off for zombies. Like they couldn't even try the Easter egg. They were only tied to a couple areas. They couldn't even. They couldn't do the whole map. Yeah. Yeah. It was more just the combat, and the combat looks cool. It's I, I do like that you have the choice of playing it like Cold War, bring in your loadout, or play like normal COD. Mm-hmm. I will always pick to play as normal COD. Start with a pistol, and that's it. I will always pick that way, unless I'm trying to like camo grind or some shit like that, you know. But 
uh, that other map looks like ass. The the other map they showed off like a month prior, that looks awesome. That's the one I'm excited yeah. for because it's dark. It looks cool. Like mm-hmm. this one just, it doesn't feel like a zombies map. It's not dark. It's not moody. It doesn't have anything. And I think that's a lot of thing because I was going back and looking at other zombies maps and it's like even the bad ones, like ones I'm not fans of like Shangri-La, the whole aesthetic is badass as shit. My favorite you know? thing about Shangri-La was the baby gun. Yeah, the baby gun was fucking cool. Mm-hmm. So They've always done a good job. I feel like with the wonder weapon. Yeah, which the wonder, the wonder weapons do look fucking cool. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Like, there's a, a there's an air that. cannon one that like this oh, guy so like had the thunder cannon. So it's like the thunder cannon, and someone's like, it's finally good. And this dude like murdered like I think he got like 20 zombies. Just poof. I remember playing Kindred and Totsen, mm-hmm. like the was it the first map for Black Ops One. Yeah. Was it one or two? It was one. Yeah. Was that's the theater one. map, right? Yeah. yeah. And I remember, like, in the theater area, you can just go in a circle and get yep. a train going. Yeah. Yep. And then I have that in my back pocket. And once it's like, all right, I got a good train going, just pull that out and just. Yeah. I, lo- I love that. I was uh, going to say, do the uh, the weapons, is, do you think there's, like, really good, like, visual variety to them? Like, it, there's a. Uh, what do you mean, you know, like, uh, do they have, like, the AK 47? Yeah. The so they, they had XM4. Love that one. AK. I can't remember the other one. It was like an AM5 or something for the assault rifle. All of them, I'll, I'll tell you this. I tried every single one, and I actually couldn't decide which one I liked the most. Like, mm. all of them felt good. They all had their own thing. Like, the AK feels like an AK. But it also, like, I, I always felt the most comfortable with that one. But then, like, I jumped to the XM4, and I liked how the attachments feel more on that. Like, the, X, yeah. the AK, I would rather run with, like, almost no attachments for some weird reason. But, like, the XM4, like, I feel like... When I have attachments on it, it's just like a fucking beast. Um, and because I pre-ordered it, I got like the, what are they called? Like the special weapons. Like you can. Yeah. The blueprints and stuff like that. Get your fucking smirk off your face. Pre-order. <laughs> I pre-order everything. You know how many games I pre-ordered on my Amazon right now? I, I got know. Space Marines. I got Metal Gear Solid. I got Dragon Ball. I got Tomb Raider collection for the Switch. I got Epic Mickey. Fuck off for anyone who's going to laugh at that. Jeez. Uh I have like two other games pre-ordered. I don't remember. Damn. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh well. Um, yeah, uh, there is there is pretty good visual variety though. They all feel yeah. good. They all sound good. And that's the one thing I I and it'll be like this once the game comes out. You're gonna find the game the gun that you want. There's gonna be the meta. Yeah, I was gonna say like is the usual iconic weapons are in there. It's yeah, I think what the, I was trying to get at. When yeah, I was basically. Looking yeah. At just like the C4 is the MP5. Yeah. yeah, and I was looking at just like some of the visuals of like the current guns uh, that are in there. The AK, it's not the forty-seven; it's a seventy-four. So it's changing yeah. in a different round. It's mm. five four by five four five. Which, five four five, yeah. if anybody knows about guns, mm-hmm. which I'm a gun person, it's a little bit different. The of hit around. marker it, is good, man. I, I really like how the hit markers punch. feel. Yeah, I, I played my PlayStation Portal with it too. Uh, so I sat in bed and like played it. It was a little rough, not going to lie. Probably because it's a beta. Because, like, it was a little laggy even on my console, like, sometimes. Mm. Um, that was the other thing. Also, I forgot to mention this. The movement, how you're moving, feels really good. It feels like Battlefield. Like, the how your gun moves, how it sways. It's um, more realistic. It feels very that, much more realistic. Small details to it. Like, those, which... My eyes were, I kind of got a, a little bit of a migraine, probably because I was playing so fucking much, but... Yeah, do you pay for freaking 10 hours? Basically straight. That's crazy. <laughs> How are you not sick? Hmm. I don't, oh, I went outside on my lawn. Oh, so you touched grass. Yeah, I went outside <laughs> and pulled weeds for like uh, an hour. Okay. Like, yeah. like, and took a break, and then mm-hmm. I hopped back on. Uh, <laughs> no, I literally did. I literally did. Like, you ever, like, do something... Like I opened up a, like a, one of the shades and I saw weeds outside and I was like, "Fuck, I gotta pull that fucking weed." But I don't have time right now. I'm coming back for you. And I went on my lunch and I pulled that fucking weed. And then I found a dead bird. Ooh, mm. bro, this you is... eat it? No. Why not? Because that's no, that's nasty. <laughs> yeah, a, a cat murdered the shit out of this fucking bird, though. Oh, so they ate it. It was like a yeah, carcass. it was like kind of oh. yeah, it was a uh, carcass. All of its wings were everywhere. It's fucking oh. feathers. Yeah, it was fucking. I remember impressive. there was one time I was leaving. I can't remember where I was. I was at a friend's house, and as I was leaving their house, I heard like this, like chirping, like yeah. in desperation. Yeah, I'm like looking around, I'm like where is that coming from? And I look up, and on the the light post, yeah. There's a hawk. Oh, 
with oh. another bird. Have you guys ever seen an owl? Oh yeah, they're absolutely. Yeah, beautiful. dude, they're everywhere. I love they're everywhere. There's one that always goes on my neighbor's house, and I just always see it. Like every morning, if you go out like seven, it's just sitting there, just looking yeah, it's for its of, next thing to eat. There's one that goes on my dog. parents' house. Oh, yeah. dude, a little it cat. Pi- it wants pickles. Yeah. It wants pickles and cheddar. Odie, <laughs> he'll fucking drop that fucking little dude. Um, but yeah, that. I like the beta. Um, I'd That's give it cool. an I'd give it an eight point five right now. Okay. Mostly because I'm still a little reserved on stuff. Yeah. So I think it'd be cool because I'm going to review it when it comes out and then I'll review it a couple months later and then yeah, I'll give it a, and, then, yeah, and then I'll give it a review before the next Call of Duty comes out. They're like, year. are you still playing it? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Are you, that should be every time. Are you still playing Call of Duty? Did you play Call of Duty this week, Zach? <laughs> did you, did you get your monies out of it? The, the movement actually does look really cool. The movement is the best part about this. That's why I'm like, I had so much fun with it. Cause I did jump back into like what Modern Warfare Three was or whatever the fuck it's called right now, just to see like how it feel. Well, it seems like this Call of Duty is what when they did the revamp of Modern Warfare, where you could mount and stuff. And this is their revamp again. It's gonna yeah. be like I think it's gonna get a lot of good praise, but mm-hmm. it's gonna be like every other Call of Duty. They, I, yeah. it, it all comes down to support again. It's one of those any multi any game with multiplayer is very hard to review until you get it couple months down the line like one of the most viewed uh video game videos i've ever gotten was destiny 2 in 2022 that's literally what the title was and i reviewed the entire thing after playing 100 hours of destiny 2 with whatever add-on it was and a lot of people were like do you feel like and i was like i mean i've been playing for months at this point like i'd probably say yeah it's pretty good but this is during the witch queen was that what the last (laughs) It possibly, yeah. If that's when you that, that's the in. one you made me hop back on that you had to join and kill the thing for me and Curtis because we could not kill that. Oh, yeah, final boss. on the campaign, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was during which one, yeah. Which was, that DLC was really good, yeah. Well, guys, it's time for the hot mic, the main topic. Rings of Power is back, uh, the Lord of the Rings series. Um, Phil's never even watched Lord of the Rings, so I don't expect him to watch this show. I don't think he watched season one. Or even gave it a shot. No. But I know you like the Lord of the Rings movies, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Because it's originally written by Tolkien. Yeah. Uh, season one or was... Based off of Tolkien. Yeah, season stories. one, I liked it. I liked the first few episodes. Then it felt a little bit meandering, and then it finally finished out. Uh, I had issues with it, though, mostly because it always felt like they had to touch on every character. Season two, a lot better. I've seen every episode. Immensely better. They don't... Not every episode shows every character like Game of Thrones, which I like. So it's like if a character has no point in that episode, there's no point to have them in that episode. Yeah. Uh, there are certain lore things that I know Tolkien fans will be fucking pissed about. Reason uh, why just like season one. That's the reason why I just have zero desire to watch it. Which is fair. That's totally fine. Um, I'm not big on the Tolkien lore. Uh, I had my friend play by play tell me all the things that are different. And he's a giant Tolkien fan. He liked this season except for one thing which is a massive spoiler and I'm not allowed to talk about until the the show's over because it's in the final episode. But with that said, I thought it'd be fun to talk about the best fantasy movies, games, and shows because fantasy is like such a big open thing. Um, Mm -hmm. So let's start with shows because I don't feel like there's a lot of them. Uh, I think the most obvious one is Game of Thrones, right? That's clearly the biggest fantasy show. But do you guys have any others that you like maybe grew up with? It could be anime, it could be animation. Um, There was one that came up and I was wondering if Phil was going to say, but I don't know if he is. So if you guys want to think about, I'm going to talk about one real fast and it's called Grimm. It was a modern day show where one man could see what people actually were for themselves. And they're like, he'd see someone and they're a werewolf, but everyone else would view them as a human. Really cool idea. It was like a six season show. I think six seasons. I absolutely love this series. It ran around 2011, six years later. So 2016 2017 really liked the show thought it was fun and uh it died out because it sucked but by the end uh what about you any other shows or is like game of thrones the one and yeah off the top of my head i would say what's that anime you're watching the berserk one was that is that i mean berserk that that came out years ago like 19 that's fine but isn't it fantasy yeah, I would say so, but it's. I think there's only like a couple of seasons, not okay. very much. It's good. I mean, I recently got into. Yeah. it. No, I've known about Berserk. I mean, 
what's it called? Um, when the creator died, there's a lot of references and memorials, I would say, in Elden mm-hmm. Ring based off of it. Oh. So, like, you know, the great sword, that yeah. giant? Yeah, yeah. That's basically oh, Berserk's that's cool. blade, the uh, dragon I like to called. hear that. And then I like you've to hear seen, that. Um, there's shrines all throughout mm-hmm. um, Elden Ring where it's just a bunch of swords. Those are the base. Those on are that? all okay. for like him because they're all heavily based and inspired by Berserk. There's a lot of stuff, and I didn't really understand it. And then I got into it. My friend Alex, he's like, "Dude, you gotta watch it." I was like, "Okay." He's a huge manga fan. Yeah, or I shouldn't say manga, but anime. huge anime. Yeah, and I watched it. I was like, "He's like, it's it's brutal. It's really really brutal. Like you're it's like it's up there." Yeah. and I was like, "How bad could it be?" Because then you like, watch it. Well, because I, the first anime I watched, other than like Dragon Ball, like a few episodes when I was growing up, was uh, Attack on Titan. Mm-hmm. And that was like, oh, like it's another fantasy. Titans. That was the next one I was going to mention. I, I, I only watched the first season, yeah. but yeah. It was like, that's pretty brutal. And he's like, oh no, it's way worse. I was like, how bad could it be? Oh, it's that bad. Yeah. There's Do one... you like the, I, I know you like brutality stuff. Do you, is that like what you prefer to see in? media yeah i mean that's the reason why i was yeah. like, so captivated by game of thrones i'm like if you can really push the limits yeah push I'm like it. really i was like oh, okay yeah. there's one episode and anybody that's listened to this that knows berserk they'll know exactly what i'm talking about the po- or um, the apocalypse i believe it's called that episode that leaves you with the worst feeling you've ever felt really you feel like you just got gutted oh. and it is not Okay. <laughs> It'll scar you. Like that's there's that scene, if you watched it, that leaves everybody with like a scar. Like they cannot get that out of their heads. Hmm. And you hate one character in particular, which okay. is known as like the wor- one of the worst characters in anime history. Just because of how evil they are? Or? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. It's just the build up and what that's happens cool. you're like what the fuck? The fuck? And cool. I started I picked up I'm starting to read the manga. I got the deluxe edition which is three books in one there's up to i believe 46 books mm-hmm. and i just ordered the second deluxe edition which comes in tuesday because it's that good i love it i love it phil i was gonna say uh van helsing would be one that i would really like the movie yeah oh okay i, I love just... that i love that movie you know there's a tv show i'm shocked you didn't mention phil hmm. arcane arcane if, what do you it's put... fantasy i take it's... it yeah yeah Okay, I thought you meant Have more you of like Arcane fantasy yet? of. Oh, dude, you dude, would love. Dude, you'd fucking love it. Yeah, and, and put the I not a fan of League of Legends. Not a fan no. of League of Legends. I watched Arcane because he told me to, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'll watch it." And the first two episodes, I'm like, hmm, "Whatever." The third episode, I was like, "Holy fuck, this is amazing!" And then I just binge the fucking rest of it. It's one of the few Netflix shows that went week to week, and it just grew and grew and grew. Yep, it is so fucking good. It, like, is, it is so good. You don't need to be a League of Legends fan no. or to. I have no, play. I have no idea yeah. anymore. Like what it is. Yeah. So um, the action. That's that's yeah. It's honestly the best. I think it did win like animation of the it year. Did, yeah, yeah. yeah, like one of the award shows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, jumping into movies, he said Van Helsing. I think yeah. Van Helsing's underrated. I know a lot of people Absolutely. shit on that. That movie's so awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, Van Helsing, um, Underworld. Underworld. The first one I really liked. The second one I liked too. The rest. Yeah, whatever. I mean, they kind of fell in that Resident Evil trend. Yeah. Yes, they did. <laughs> Very I like much. The so. whole lore behind it and yeah. the history and like how the story is built around it. Mm-hmm. If I could, I wish they would make Van Helsing a bigger, like yeah. almost like. Same. Was it the Brothers Grimm? Yeah, like in that kind of. I style. love that movie. I love like, that I movie. I wish they would make like if they put Van Helsing as a TV show. And him just not oh. fighting just mm-hmm. oh, be werewolves awesome. and Dracula. It'd and be so yeah. awesome. And Frankenstein. Because it's uh, I don't know if you ever watched it. It was a Netflix show called Midnight Mass. Mm-mm. Oh, my love. fuck. You know what, dude? Fuck, fuck Arcane. That is the best Netflix show ever made. And I shit on Netflix a lot. My yeah. bottom five worst films of the year are fucking Netflix movies. That movie or that show is fucking incredible. Yeah, I was going to so say, good. could you imagine like a Van Helsing universe with like a Midnight Mass like kind of twist, right? Fuck me up, man. Um, me it. Oh, go ahead. 
Midnight Mass is a really good uh, show. It just kind of follows this person who had like a really bad like car accident. He was drunk driving and it's kind of like his how he lives with his life and he lives on like a small island. Yeah, this whole community. There's like maybe yeah. like 60 people that live on this island. Okay. Yeah, and it um you notice that like the priest there at the yeah. Catholic church, he comes they, back from like a huge mission and he's just weird. Yeah, so he he was like an old man the old man goes away and this new young man appears and you kind of figure out the relationship between that and like who he really is. Be careful. And, uh, yeah, like the whole point is, I don't want to spoil yeah, it. But you don't know really what's good. going on and you don't, there's a, a creature thing to this whole thing. And I'll just leave it at that. Like it is yeah. very fucking cool. I want to say they like one series of books that I remember reading in like junior high that I really Circuit enjoyed. Freak. No, ah. that's a. I like that I movie. Love, yeah. It's really good. And it's actually a really good book. Um, but there's 13 books. I had to rem- look it up yeah. to remember what it was. And I believe they made a movie out of it, but okay. it was not that great. Um, but if they did more of a grit, more of a horror aspect, I think it'd be fantastic. Which one? Uh, I think I know what you're talking about. The Last Apprentice. Uh, I never read it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, great books. For some reason, I thought you were gonna say The Dark Tower because that movie was asked to, but the oh, books yeah, amazing. Yeah. Oh, The Dark Tower is yeah. not the uh, the Matthew McConaughey movie with Idris Elba. It with Idris Elba. Yeah, yeah. It's We're, like all Matthew Stephen King's and stuff. The devil, yeah, essentially, right? Because that's yeah that the movie the con like who they got the cast I was like oh my god this perfect casting. Yeah. The movie just was not what the book was. Can I talk all. about a spoiler in that? I don't care. Okay, I was gonna say like isn't that like the whole the mist thing, the monster, isn't that what like it is? Kinda. I mean, the the Dark Tower is really cool because it connects everything in Stephen King's universe. Yeah. Pennywise is in it, or Pennywise is at least mentioned in it. Uh, the mist, a- anything yeah. from any of his books are relevant to the Dark Tower, which is cool. Uh, Amazon has the rights to it right now. So I hope they end up doing a series for it. And the guy who made midnight mass has a deal at Amazon prime now. So oh, wow. there's been rumors that he's going to do that. Cause right now he's making, he made the doctor sleep movie, the, the shining sequel film, which was amazing. Yeah. He did midnight mass. He did haunting of Hill house. And then he left Netflix and now he's at Amazon prime, which another good show he just did on Netflix, which was the fall of the house of usher. Amazing. Oh, yeah. The Edgar Allan Poe, uh, he combined like seven different short stories from Edgar Allan Poe into one show. Interesting. That's cool. And it's so well written because my wife is really into Edgar Allan Poe's poems. I, I wasn't huge on them, but I went back and read them after. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, this is that one. Oh, this is that one. And the way it ties into Because it's like, uh, imagine Final Destination, but taken a little bit more serious and not as yeah. cheesy. That's how the series is. One question that, that popped in my head. Yeah. Because I don't... I can't, it's been a while since I've really watched or watched it or and I don't yeah it's been a long I've only watched uh, the first the one the tower, uh, tower Dark Tower Dark Tower do they ever mention the turtle in the Dark Tower or any of them in the ship movies yeah no <laughs> no the the first it has a an easter egg with a, a Lego turtle but no, they never did the turtle. Do you know about the turtle? No. You don't know about the turtle? No, the I turtle is Pennywise's arch nemesis. It's the only it's thing a that a giant completely... turtle as big as Earth. Yeah. It's the only thing that he's like absolutely afraid of, too. It's a giant turtle. Really? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I fucking love it. I, I, I think I told you. So when I went to go see It Part 2, I told him. If the turtle is in it, I don't care how the movie comes out. It's a 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> it's a 10. 10 out of 10. You put the turtle in there, yeah. I think I went with an 8 out of 10. Because <laughs> there was no turtle. But there, How many it movies are there? There's two, and they have a show coming out next year that is about Pennywise's origins. Interesting. Yeah, that one's, it's going to be on uh, Max, so I'm very excited for the Ooh, turtle. Turtle. Oh, yeah, I hope the turtle's in it. Um, Jumping into this, also, let's talk about movies uh, a little bit more, a couple more. Uh, the Green Knight is phenomenal if no one's ever seen it. It's an amazing fantasy film. Uh, it takes place during the King Arthur days. Fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, The Lord of the Rings, we'd be dismissed not to say how amazing those are. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Hellboy, the first two. The I new count one them. looks pretty good. 
Oh no. N- no. 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 I haven't seen the, any of the stuff on the new no. Hellboy. Does uh, it have I, a, like, I David ha- Harbor again? No. I have. I think it looks good. It looks like it's an actual horror movie. Okay. Just... So 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 let me let me give you my me. perspective. Okay. Okay. Well, so you haven't seen it. I have not seen the movie have yet. Heard anything about? I it? I know someone who's seen it. Oh no. <laughs> Dang. Man, have you oh, seen the no. have you seen the new poster for it? No, it looks like a fucking porno. I'm not. Can I use your phone real fast yeah. just to find this fucking thing? So who plays Hellboy? A uh, random guy. Random guy. Ran. I, I'll look it up in a second. Hellboy, the crooked man poster. I want you guys to look at this. Come on, it's probably my phone. All right. <laughs> this is the official poster for the movie. It kind of has that really early 2000s vibe. I want you to look at the leprechaun in the back. What does that scream to you? Doesn't this look like a porno? Doesn't this look like a fucking porno poster? Like when pornos were first like released kind of thing? Yeah, look at the makeup. It, like it looks like it Hellboy, looks, the crooked looks, man, will be fucking the leprechaun in this episode. I wouldn't say that, but it looks very, very poorly done. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> I have, it's funny how your your mind goes to porno. I, I saw someone else. I saw crooked someone else wang. So the comic for the the crooked man is actually really cool. I really like it. And Hellboy comics are cool because there's two different styles to it. Some of it is action, which is some of the other movies, um, like what the the David Harbor one tried to do. Uh, uh, Ron Perlman's Hellboy with Del Toro was kind of action and horror and I'm not going to lie so I don't think the trailer looks good personally but I like the horror effect That's what. and when I saw it I said yeah. you know what there's a lot writing against this because Ketchup Entertainment is the one making this movie this time Ketchup, Ketchup Entertainment uh, which the name doesn't really sell me on anything and the director of this is the guy who made Crank so like Oh, okay. <laughs> the one with uh, with J- Jason Statham, which like they're fun, but he also really hasn't made a good movie in like Those 3 years. Those are so absurd but so much fun. Yeah, but he also made Gamer, which Gamer. I know oh my I do not like that movie, but I know some people do. And Jonah Hex is one of the worst comic book movies ever made. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever yeah. seen it. Never seen Gamer is, it. Gamers, I mean, those movies Gamer was not, it's not a good movie, but it's an entertaining movie. Yeah. I, I hate that. I was a wild I movie. I hated that movie. Yeah, that Curtis sick. kept telling me, he's like, you got to, I, I watched it for the first time like three years ago. And he was like, you need to watch it. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I watched this shit. What? I, yeah, <laughs> I watched this shit and I'm like, what the fuck I is this nav- movie? I would never put Dude, it. the whole scene with the waffles. Stop it. Stop it. And the, the bowl of syrup. Oh, ugh. that is like, I think about that scene so many times. <laughs> um. So really yeah, funny. so like, that didn't really sell me or give me any hype. And then you cast like a no name, which is okay. Like to have a no name. Some Ron Perlman to me, for me was a no name when I first saw Hellboy, but I know he was a bigger actor and stuff like that. Yeah. I just Ron Perlman get... was in the second blood. True. He was, I forgot about that. I, I just, it doesn't like for me, just everything about this movie just doesn't sell me at all. Like this movie looks like shit to me. Um, I like that they were trying to go for more horror. Um, I a review leaked out Thursday saying it's one of the worst movies ever made. That's crazy to say because Borderlands came out, The Serenity. Crow came out. <laughs> Serenity's entertaining, um, but yeah, apparently it's just boring. It's cheap. Yeah, they said it's a fan film. It looks like a fan film, and you know what's wild? The creator of Hellboy helped write the script. Oh. So I'm hoping I watch this, and as a fan of Hellboy, I enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. But it, I don't have any expectations. I mean, I hated the last one. I fucking hated the, I didn't last, see one. the last one. It was awful. It was terrible. But a lot of that was not the director's fault. There was a lot of studio interference and shit like that in the back end. Where like I watched the movie, I was like I could see this being great. I could see this being great. And then hearing about how the actual cut was, they changed a lot um, in the editing room. So I, I definitely think that was more of a studio issue. But yeah, just bring back Del Toro. Just let him finish. Just let him finish his trilogy. Uh, 
fucking awful. Did you like the, uh, the Golden Army? I love that. It's one of my favorite. If you ask me for my top 10 good. favorite comic book movies, that's my number 10. Really? Mm-hmm. I love the Golden Army. It's really good. Yeah. I, I like wasn't going to mention a comic book one. Yeah. But we were talking about fantasy, and one show that popped in my mind was the uh, that Amazon show that had Orlando Bloom. Had, oh, like, Carnival fan- Row. I yeah. like that show. What's What do you think about that one? I like that one. I never saw the second season because it took them four years to come out with it. Yeah, I was going to say... Like, I remember seeing the trailer and it looked pretty crazy and wacky. And That was like, my first Amazon tank. screening ever for oh, yeah. early stuff. So when I went to Comic-Con in 2019, they, they had a huge presence for it. And that's how I got uh, Amazon access. Oh, wow. was that show. Oh, that's cool. So, you know what? Uh, now I'm just thinking now everything's like registering in my brain about like things that I would like to see. I don't know if you ever played the Telltale game Wolf Among Us. Uh, yeah, the sequel. I, uh, I never. I know about it, but I never played it. That would be like I bought one the that comic. I would absolutely love like a live movie adaptation. I of. wish. I cannot wait for the second game though. Yeah. That's, I, all right. We got to talk sorry, about games. Go ahead, go no, ahead. no, no. He's good. Do we? Are we good on movies or can we jump into games? Yeah. Jump into games because the what I was gonna say is actually related to games. Okay, you go. So one game I thought of that I'd really like to see. A predator game like a good one like just i think there's one that came out they came like out an, with an online one where you could play as dr disrespect yeah, that's fucking right. predator <laughs> are you serious yeah so the predator so, game like because i remember there's one that released it was like in new york and it was like back on the xbox no no no, no no so, no, no. so they, you, that you one. yeah you're, you're the game so guy. basically this is the um asymmetrical yeah this is asymmetrical 1v4 uh, the whole premise is that you're a bunch of Marines. You go into the jungle and you have to actually do these objectives. And you have oh, to yeah, do yeah, this yeah. stuff. Yeah, I played that. I played and then it. the Predator has to go along and like ruin your like yeah, yeah. mission. And it's kind of like really replaying the whole like original Predator movie. It's fun. I, 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 I played it. it. I played which it. is really cool. It's fun. Um, Phil was going to buy that. I remember Phil was going to buy that game at this. Do you remember the store? Remember the store with the, the old lady? The retro oh, game store? Oh, yeah. That's right. Then they went out of business. Yeah. And he blames himself, Loki. Because <laughs> yeah. the, the one time he didn't buy one fucking game. I know. But uh, tell it's the, the thing I was referencing. Yeah. The, the thing that he's referencing is that the game has had like so many DLCs. Uh, a lot of the like skins are like from the Predator comics. Yeah, a yeah. lot of the stuff. They did a collaboration with Dr. Disrespect before the whole controversy. You got to play as him. And uh, that's been the whole like. Me. I, I saw the whole. Isn't Drake trend. one too? I, I don't I know think, if he I is. think Drake is... I think that would probably be like a mod. Was that a mod? Someone probably modded that. There's no That's way Drake's so in Predator. That's so but bad. Yeah, that, that obviously aged like milk. Um, <laughs> okay, it is fake. It yeah, is fake. okay, so good. I was like, there's no way. You know, it was funny. Um, we were going... <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Drake, so uh, my nephew's football game was yesterday, and mm-hmm. we went all the way out to like Tucson to go watch this. And during their like halftime show, they just the entire time was playing Drake. I was like, "Are you guys really gonna play Drake <laughs> at a the, kid's fucking <laughs> at a high school game?" <laughs> I think it would have been funnier if not like us played. I know. It, I, I was kind of laughing. I'm like, "Well, I guess it is his target demographic, yeah. right?" Um, but but to- really I, quickly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to shout out a podcast I was listening to because of the this whole kind of thing of. Child predators and stuff. Um, oh. What's his name? How to Catch a Predator. Danny Jones podcast. Uh huh. He was interviewing. I ooh, saved interviewing. it. Interviewing. Thank you. I know. I'm doing better. I can't remember you are. Who he's interviewing? But I'm going through it, and there is a lot, a lot, of connections with Jeffrey Epstein and P Diddy, and it is. Fascinating. That's good. That's good to know. You okay? Yep. So, if anybody is curious about that and honestly just wants to get like their mind blown of how far deep this stuff goes, definitely give that podcast episode a listen. But honestly, his every episode is super good. Hell yeah. Uh, let's talk about games. Vi- best fantasy video games. Uh, Elden Ring is, I mean, the Elden obvious Ring's. one that you just said. Bloodborne, Dark Souls. Let's just anything knock them from out of the software, way. honestly. Yeah, with Sekiro. Yep. Count. Yeah, Sekiro. Um, I mean, they just fucking banger after banger after banger. Is they Bloodborne still your favorite? 
What is Bloodborne still your favorite out of the the from software ones? Yes, because it also is very. I mean, the environment, the aesthetic. I like that goth mm -hmm. look. Um, I think they did prop. It's hard because they do such good boss designs on every game they make. Yeah, but they're that one's one of my favorites because it's heavily influenced on HP Lovecraft. Yeah, where it's so cool the boss you're like what is this i'm looking at and anybody that knows hp lovecraft uh those monsters are so grotesque mm -hmm. and so like your mind could not imagine something so horrific mm -hmm. and that's pretty much how they designed it everything is so good i love bloodborne even like the lore of it yeah. everything the backstory yeah. we're talking about fantasy games now so yeah so we just mentioned like, from software so okay just like fantasy games that we like or just like what we want to see like adaptations best of ones or best ones mm -hmm. hmm. i'm just a, i'm a big action role-playing game fan so like obviously i love diablo uh, yeah diablo is probably my number one diablo 2 so yeah diablo uh diablo 2 probably diablo 4 Path of Exile is going to be the new You're one. You're forgetting a big one that you played a lot of hours in. Oh, am I? What Baldur's am I? Gate. Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's the MVP for most people. I still haven't beaten it. It's yeah. fucking long. It's really long. I'm still, yeah. I have like three different characters all in different that's, acts. That's too much for me. Uh, yeah. Dragon Age, awesome. The Witcher. The Witcher. Played Witcher. Yeah. I played a little bit of Witcher, but never got into um, it as much. Speaking of Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor is fucking awesome. Mm. Shadow, yeah, that's in one game I'd like to see them make touch. Another back on. one, they're yeah, making the one. Wonder Woman game right now. That's like all fantasy and epic. Mm. So during that, they're I'm still not lobbing that. off orcs heads. <laughs> I mean, you're lobbing off fucking other fantasy creature heads, which is yeah. am I? Cool. Yeah, that's what's supposed is to it, be. Is it supposed to be M rated? Uh, who knows? I don't even no. know. They announced it. Like Give me six some crazy ago. shit. They do have the that system. What's it called? The henchman system or oh, yeah. the nemesis system? Yeah, the nemesis system they have in it. Speaking of that, do you guys remember the game Overlord? Like the the one oh, when you had all yeah. the minions and shit? Like they were like... Yeah, I know which game you're oh, talking yeah, about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that for was the Xbox that. 360. Yeah, that was a fun... It was like an M-rated Pikmin. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. I didn't buy it, but I remember playing the like demo. When yeah. demos actually were a thing back then. From your Game Informer yeah. magazine. R.I.P. Game Informer. Yeah, we were talking about that. R.I.P. to them. <laughs> um, I'm good trying run, to think what run. else. Uh, fantasy games. Hogwarts Legacy. If you count that, that was actually really surprising. I never fun. played it. I heard a lot of people I mean, really liked it. It was fun. Skyrim. Great. Skyrim. I never played it, but I remember my cousin never playing it. Never played Skyrim? Just, yeah. Wow. Uh, Tyler. God of War. Oh, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, anything else I'm forgetting for this one? That you guys would like... Oh, Kingdom Hearts is another one. I really like Final Fantasy. Yeah. I'm trying to stick with like the whole medieval theme of like... Did anyone fantasy. play Dragon's Dogma? Any of them? Nope. No. I heard uh, people like the new one. It yeah. looked all right. Um, I play video games, but I'm, was not a, I'm not a game. Legend of Zelda. Yeah. I really like that one. Tears of the Kingdom. So I don't think good. I've ever played a Zelda game. Really? You would like Breath of the Wild and like Tears nah. of the Kingdom. Though, yeah, so if like, you were to ever play, just play Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. Like, like literally, like, I will never touch Breath of the Wild again. There's not a fucking reason to touch that game ever again for me. Because Tears it of the just Kingdom one is just, it. Yeah. in every way. Yeah. It's the same map, but bigger. And you have a top and a bottom now. And you can also build stuff in that game, right? Yeah. yeah. Or is that both? No, them? no. You, you could also shit. like stick weapons onto other weapons and make them stronger. Yeah. yeah. So like I've seen really people cool do some stuff. Pretty, it's so wild. crazy stuff. I still have not beaten that game. I'm on the last boss and I just like, I don't remember what came out and I was like, huh. It's like uh, Little Big Planet, but awesome. Zelda. I love Little Big Planet. We need more of those. Yeah. What other? Uh, Heavenly Swords was cool on the PS3. Oh, I remember I that I love game. that fucking game. That's old. Yeah, Devil May it. Cry. Oh, God, yeah. Devil May Cry. They and tried it, rebooting that, like, what, eight years ago? I like the reboot. No. they. Well, they came out they with another Devil, one. They, Devil May Cry Yeah, they did, they did four. Which was fantastic. You played that Amazing. Virgil. And then they came out with the reboot, and then five came out, which was uh, the three characters, and then you can go back as Virgil. Because five I'm is pretty the sure one. that one is Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry four, but Which they one? also have one where you play as just like young Dante. Well, four I thought was Nero. 
I thought you played Google Nero because you have the demon arm. Well, I think that's three. I think what I could be wrong. Devil. I could be wrong. I think you might actually be right. Can you? Because four was my or first. Or just look up uh, Devil May Cry. Just the games. games. Yeah. And just see which one. I want to see when the most recent one was released. I think it might I be four, like... but maybe it is five. No, five is the one you play with all of them. That one emo kid that looks like Adam Driver. Yeah, which is badass. Yeah, and He's... then the because he has the cane and the creature, and then he plays Dante and. Nero, is it Nero? Yeah, it's Nero. And then but you can go back that through one, his Virgil. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. like the deals or like a, yeah. an add-on. And then four was but all n- Nero. Yeah, four was all Nero. Okay, so it was still May Cry Five. Devil May. I think I think May you can Cry. play as Virgil on one of the other ones though. What Devil May Cry can I play as Vir- Virgil? DMC three, DMC five, DMC four special edition. So maybe ah. you played the special edition. I never got to play that one, but I guess you can no. play as Lady and Trish also in four special edition. I love four. Four is my favorite. I fucking adored four so much. I, five's badass. Five is good too. You bought me that one. I like that one. Have you ever played Double May Cry? I played like Double May Cry two yeah. on Ooh. PlayStation. Speaking two. of Ninja Gaiden, I was that was yeah, my next one. Ninja Gaiden, Gaiden was fucking awesome too. Three. It, was it two? Yeah, it was two. Two's the one with yeah. the giant scythe on the yeah. case. So fucking badass. Kill like a giant werewolf. <laughs> yeah, I love that. But other than that, guys, that's the podcast. Wow. Yeah. Best fantasy. How was that? That was fun. Uh, we got Go three more episodes. Lane. Well, three more episodes for the next month. Um, one of them, too, will be coming back with me. We might have a guest and then vice versa, giving them a break. Uh, but other than that, guys, you guys got anything coming up? You guys excited? Uh, we got some cool topics to talk about. We uh, got toys that became movies like Transformers because uh, Paramount sent us a cool lunchbox that'll be on the set when we talk about that. Um, we're going to have more of a philosophical episode soon. And then at the end of the month, we're talking about what's coming out for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, one of the things it just kind of I think it came out literally today was the there was a um, not really a trailer but it was much more of like a thank you video from the people who are making forever winter, which is one of the games. What's that? Uh, It's that, it's that crazy apocalypse looking world game. That's a looter shooter. I showed you the trailer for it and you were like, this is kind of crazy. There was like giant monsters and things. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, The, those people released a video talking about just like the gaming industry and they were like super excited. They're releasing uh, early access on September 24th. And it's only twenty seven dollars, and there's like no pay to win microtransactions, cool. that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm just like, I'm so excited to play nice. it and like review it. I saw uh, a streamer that I enjoy uh, watching, but I don't watch streamers. It's just more of clips on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, Asmin Gold, he posted a video of, like sixteen minutes talking about that. He's like, this game looks like it was made for me, and it just. From what yeah. I saw, I was like, this looks crazy. Yeah, it's it's definitely like has that like dark world fantasy. Yeah, it's cool. So and it goes with today's main topic. So yeah. I love it. Is that this year or did it already uh, come yeah. out? Yeah, it's this year. It's coming out September cool. 24th. So well, I guess in the upcoming podcast, I'm going to be talking about that. Cause sweet. Yeah, the preview. Yeah, yeah, we'll literally go down for everything coming out for the rest of the year. But thank you guys again so much for watching. Stay classy and stay being a geek.